All right, so I don't even know if I'm gonna post this video, but I'll make it anyways. Um, 2013 Ram, 3500, got a uh, stainless diesel, second gen swap. Going to put in the fleece exhaust brake. Um, seems like it's pretty straightforward, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so my goal is um, I'm gonna take out the uh, take off the tire, take off the fender flare, take off the wheel well liner. That's going to give me real good access into the uh, inside of the uh, downpipe there. Uh, the top you can tell is on the stainless diesel kit is pretty tight, so uh, that'll be a little bit of a chore. Uh, I'm not taking the turbo off, I'm not doing any of that. Um, and then I'll follow the fleece instructions and kind of just talk through it as I go, and that way. Um, everybody has a pretty good clue as to how everything's going while I go. And I think uh, today looks like the day I'm going to clean the air filter too. So I'll clean that and set that off to the side to dry while I dick around with the rest of this stuff. All right, so wheels off, wheel liner is out. Uh, I'll probably take this uh, reservoir off just so I got a clear shot. But there you can see you've got a nice straight shot on that downpipe there. Um, Looks like, I'll have to look at this guy. That might have a little bit of impact on where everything goes. May have to do a little bend in that. Uh, That's one of the AC lines. And then uh, obviously the downpipe's gonna have to change that sucker. I don't remember it being that tight to the frame. It's like, almost feels like it's on the frame. I'll have to climb under there and look. Uh, so now the goal is to uh, get that heat blanket off the top. Get the heat blanket off, uh, loosen up the downpipe, uh, the elbow, and uh, get all that out of there. I know there's been some concern about how close the uh, how close the elbow is to the firewall. Um, this is my stock setup, and of course you saw I had a heat blanket on it. Um, so that's the exhaust housing. Um, I've got a good, uh, I've got a half inch there, you know, barely enough for the blanket to fit into. Um, but it's really not terrible. So, um, we'll see how that new elbow looks. That's a cast elbow. This is pipe. So that cast is going to take up more space just because it's a thicker, you know, this is a much thicker material. So that might be interesting to see how that drops in. Hopefully I can still get that, uh, that heat blanket on. The other thing I noticed on this heat blanket is, uh, so it's rubbing obviously. So I'm losing, you know, wherever it's rubbing, obviously it's real close to whatever it's rubbing. And then you, as soon as it rubs a hole through, you're not providing any protection on the heat. So I may have to get, let me get another heat blanket for that. And then uh, try to figure out exactly where it's rubbing, which is probably that plastic, uh, probably that plastic um, duct there for all the wiring that goes across the firewall. So I may have to get a little creative with that, but you can also see that AC line right there, down in that corner right there. So that's the one that I may have to do a little finagling with. Um, so I'll get that elbow off and we'll go from there. All right, got the clamp up top done. Uh, looks like my dumb ass welded this on, uh, with this little flex piece on way back in the day, which is fantastic. Uh, cause that means I'm going to have to cut it off cause the, uh, down pipe is all one piece. And I do see, I do have a little bit of flex in the frame there doesn't look like it was ever hitting the frame so that's not a big deal but uh now that the downpipe clamp up top is loose i'm gonna have to uh probably just unbolt it here i guess i don't know if i'm gonna be able to get that whole thing out i'm trying to remember i feel like i took this transmission cross member out uh to put this downpipe in if i remember right i don't remember so I'll dick around with that. And then uh, all this black you see, this is from a, a loose oil filter. 
one time it came off and lost the uh, lost some oil out of it so that's no big deal so I'll unbolt this back here and see if we can fish this thing out probably not okay so downpipe is off it's important to note well I guess it doesn't matter um, it did come off with just a turn a turn of a wrench uh, I mean I mean sawzall turn of a sawzall dropped right out so now we will uh, We'll get this elbow, and I don't remember, I don't think there's a pin. Yeah, there's no pin on this. But the uh, fleece exhaust brake has pins, so I'll have to look at the, uh, I'll have to look at the uh, exhaust housing and see if there's a pin on that exhaust housing. There probably isn't, because this is not a fleece second gen swap. So if there's not, I'll probably have to pull, pull this pin off or cut this pin off. Um, to get that set back in there so we'll be right back okay so second gen you can tell there is no pin in order to clock uh, this elbow so I am gonna take this pin off I don't think it matters which one I'll have to measure those see if they're the same but I'm sure they are so you'll have to you have to take this little pin out otherwise that's not going to seat okay so i uh i broke out the fancy dancy harbor freight grinder out of the selection of grinders this one had the cutoff wheel and i did smooth that pin out so it's important though don't go gouging that thing into where there's a big old freaking divot in it just nick it off and smooth it out just a little um, and then per the uh, instructions because uh, I figured probably be a good idea to read those. Um, it says to hook this all together. I did leave this pin on that basically clocks the exhaust brake to the uh, exhaust elbow. Um, I figure it's not going to hurt anything. You know, there's a ton of room under there. Uh, there's a ton of room under there for this uh, exhaust to uh, brake to actually be mounted into. So I figure it's not going to hurt to have that where it's at. I don't figure that I'm gonna need to clock that any, any left or right. And that's not gonna do anything for the downpipe outlet anyways. Um, so I left the pin in there. The one thing I did no, uh, notice was in the instructions, there's nothing in regards to this port here and this port here, um, I presume. And then this one here is just a, uh, this one here is just a mounting bolt, like a uh, mounting flange. So, um, I don't presume that that does anything. These, I think, are probably back pressure sensor ports. Um, I'm really not sure, but the kit did come with two plugs and both of these plugs have that cone shape to them. Um, so I'm willing to bet that these are for that to fit that little cone shape in there. Um, like I said, I didn't see anything in the instructions except for on the very first page this picture, uh, this is drain engine coolant, remove the <clears throat> downpipe, assemble the cast elbow to the exhaust brake, uh, install the exhaust brake to the discharge your turbo. So, I mean, it blasts through that pretty quickly. My fear is though, you get that sucker installed and I have a feeling that's probably a two person job. One guy to hold that exhaust brake up, one guy to put the V-band clamp on. So that's gonna be kind of a clusterfuck. But in this picture here, Right above the coolant ports, which are these two guys here, you can see that there's a black plug. Um, you can see there's a black plug on this guy right there. So I figure that's what this is. I'm gonna plug that now. And then if you get this thing installed and don't have this plug in, it's gonna be a bitch to get to because that's gonna be pointing towards the block. So um, that's probably one good thing to know. I don't think I'm gonna use any thread tape or Teflon or anything on this. Um, this is probably going to get pretty damn hot, I would imagine. This one does have some sealing on it from fleece from the factory, uh, but this is kind of outside. Uh, you know, there's all the heat's going to be rolling through here, so there's going to be some heat soak into this part here, but uh, it's kind of outside of this, so I would imagine having coolant running through this motor assembly probably keeps that cool enough where it's not going to burn off. So. I'm just gonna plug that guy. Put, huh? Yeah, that happens. Um, so I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install these with no thread sealant, 
and then just hope to God that uh, it actually seals up. I'm thinking if, uh, if everything's machined right, that that cone will actually seal inside on that guy. And then uh, if for some reason I find that uh, I do need that um, uh, back pressure sensor, uh, assuming that's what that is, uh, then I should be able to take off the uh, outer or outermost plug, this guy here, and be able to access it. The other thing that I'm doing too, when I did install this, I know that this uh, firewall side is pretty tight. So um, I made sure that I put this bolt for the V-band on the inward side. And then I also tried to keep the end of this clear so that when I go to tighten these guys up, I can get a wrench in there and not have to dick around with getting around this nut. So, um, and then I can also, <clears throat> Ugh, kids, uh, I can also be able to reach it if, uh, from the wheel well to loosen and tighten that if I need. So we'll tighten those guys up and we'll see how much fun this is to uh, stuff in the hole. That's what she said. Okay, so um, this thing is a biatch to get up in there and that, uh, that uh, AC line is a problem. Not a big one, but you cannot get you cannot get that lined up with that uh, AC line in there. So um, I am gonna have to bend that. Uh, I'm not gonna go crazy with it and hope I don't kink it, but uh, I probably am just gonna unclip it and just give this thing. Just gotta watch that, watch that elbow up there because if you yank on this thing too hard and kink it, you're gonna have some problems. So I'll try that. Hopefully that works. And if not, I may have to, uh... is that an AC line? What the hell is that? Oh yeah. Comes out up in the... Okay, so yeah, that is the uh, low pressure, our AC port. So I will uh, see if I can stuff, stuff that back up in there again. Uh, you don't have to have two people for this, but it sure does help. Okay. Uh, that sucked exactly as much as I expected it to. So I've got the, uh, the elbow on, um, this son of a bitch, man, it's a two hand process. It's a two man process, pushing the elbow on and getting the V-man clamp around it. Um, but I found, make sure you back this nut all the way off to where there's just a couple of threads throwing. That way you can spread that V-band clamp, um, like this. Once you get it up there, you can spread it. Uh, you can spread it to get it over the flange. Uh, and then when you do that, you'll drop the nut and it'll land way, way the fuck over there. So, uh, you know, you won't be able to get it. So make sure you got another one sitting by handy. And then uh, the Milwaukee has to be a Milwaukee. Uh, DeWalt won't do it. Uh, Milwaukee is the only one in the world that can get up in there and uh while you're holding that clamp zip that thing down you don't want to crank it tight just zip it down enough to hold it uh and that way you can still clock this guy it's got tension on it but you can still clock it how you need because the next cluster is going to be this monstrosity uh, i did take the pin off on this side um the way that it was sitting up in there uh i i, I figure i'm gonna by myself, I'm gonna fight that piece of shit to get up in there, get the pin lined up, get the V-band clamp on, get the V-band clamp tightened. Uh, so I said, screw it, I'm just gonna zip the pin off. Um, it's not doing anything as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I'm just gonna void the fleece warranty and zip that pin off. That way I can hold it up in there, two hands again, and they be able to uh, um, do it by one, by one guy. So the other thing I noticed too, I know, like I said, a lot of guys are having issues with clearance right here, um, or a couple of guys that I've seen already. And this one is already a little tighter than our than the old one was. Um, if you don't have clearance there, you're already touching, you're gonna be fighting that thing for a minute, for sure, trying to get that, that V-band clamp around it. Uh, I tried starting it with the clamp on the elbow, putting the clamp and the elbow up in the hole, and then sliding the clamp over and that didn't work out real well. So I ended up with a clamp started on this guy on the exhaust housing, put the elbow up in place, spread the clamp, pull it forwards or pull it backwards and then work its way around. If this is in your way, 
just be aware of that because you'll be fighting that won't be able to figure out why oh uh, you'll be hitting that piece that's why so just be aware of that next piece of advice don't put the damn exhaust brake on backwards that was easy enough to put in but if you have the pins in place you're going to fight it for like 15 minutes uh but then you put it on backwards so then you got to do it all over again the coolant ports are supposed to be on this side don't do what i did okay that sucker's in place so again i left this v-band clamp loose so that i can clock the elbow and i left this one loose so that i can clock this this is nice because it hits that exhaust manifold pretty quick and then it also comes up and hits this uh, ac line so there's not much not much play between the two so if you can clock it you end up with a whole lot more play so um i'm gonna keep it probably not super far away from the exhaust but uh, enough to where i can get maybe my hand in between it just for heat dissipation you know if they've got coolant running through this guy it's probably going to be okay but uh the next next thing is going to be interesting is i kind of expected the plane of this flange to be a little bit further pointed down uh and it's not so the way it routes right now it looks like it's actually going to contact the firewall back here with, with, uh, with the new with the new downpipe so and that all that all has everything to do with uh placement of uh placement of the turbo so again if you don't have a fleece specific second gen swap then uh your placement of the turbo is not going to be what they expect it to be which means that this downpipe isn't going to fit exactly how they expect it to so you might have to get a little creative obviously you can't move the turbo uh, i could take that spacer out that's in there but then that affects uh intercooler piping and uh i know when i did my intercooler or when i did this piping it was a nightmare uh, i fought that and fought that and fought that to get that one in um so i don't really want to screw with that uh if I drop that down three quarters of an inch, then that's gonna make this connection a nightmare. So that's out of the question. So uh, I may end up doing some relief denting uh, with the uh, big BFH uh, and get some clearance on that. So we'll see. Uh, hopefully this video is not getting too long, but I just wanna you know, kinda uh, point out everything that I run into when installing this guy, just make it easier for the next guy. Uh, also, if uh, you can see all this oil, this is a failure on my part. I never put a filter on the uh, CCV delete. I really should uh, just put a crankcase vent back in there and say, screw it. I didn't have any problems with it. I mean, whatever, 50,000 miles, replace it. Who gives a shit? That's easy enough. If you're Michael May, then uh, uh, you'd be up in there with your polisher and degreaser, grease, degreasing everything, and then you'd probably paint it too. Uh, you definitely want a nice painted block for the next idiot that goes in there to work on it. So. Uh, you know, now's a good time to do all that polishing, Michael. Okay, so yeah, this is where the fun begins. Um, so I'm only contacting the flange on the front, not even touching on the back. I'm touching the heat shield here. I mean, there's no, no way this downpipe is not long enough. So, um, I mean, look at all the clearance there. So this will have to be way down here in order for it to all work. So, uh, that tells me, well, I haven't even looked at the um, fleece second gen kits, but I'm assuming that they're second gen kits. The exhaust is in the, the manifold is in the down position, which would bring that entire assembly down eight, eight inches, six inches, something like that. Um, in that case, this would probably work. So if your exhaust, your, your turbo is in the down position, turbo is in the down position or your manifold is in the down position i don't know if you'd have a whole lot of problems you're still gonna have to do some welding but if it's way up high like this i don't think it's gonna work for you you're gonna have to definitely count on welding which uh, i kind of expected so no big deal so i'm gonna get to cutting and uh what i'll probably end up doing is cutting that uh oh let me get this out probably end up cutting this guy set at the straight line and then uh, drop the whole thing down all right so I set this up here I was just gonna hack this guy off um, but uh, found out that <laughs> this is stainless 
like uh, decent stainless too. So that's going to be a problem with welding it all together. Uh, my old one, I think, was aluminized steel. Um, I don't think it was stainless, so I honestly can't remember. It's been years. Um, so, plan on that. You're going to have to be welding on stainless. All right, so I've cut that on off on the flat. There's the piece, the drop. And go to fit it up, and you can see... I'm contacting the firewall right here where my thumb is at. So I can't get that up in there. Let me see if I get the camera a little better. Won't seal contacting the firewall. So I'll probably do a little denting. And uh, if you're like, oh, if you dent the exhaust, the flow's going to blah 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 look up uh look up uh engine masters with uh david freiberger uh hot rod tv motor trend and uh they took a manifold and on a like a 350 dynoed it stock as is and then beat the ever-living shit out of it for clear clearancing um i mean they just just hammered on this thing until it was like freaking collapsed and they dynoed it and dynoed it and they did like five dyno tests and they ended up losing virtually no power. Uh, so I am seriously not concerned about putting a little dent in the middle of this guy to get me some clearance there. It's not gonna affect flow. Um, uh, if you don't believe me, then don't do it. I don't care, not my problem. So that's that. And then uh, we'll get to the next piece in a minute. All right, so I just slid the drop over this guy. Um, in a perfect world, I'd probably put a clamp on that just so that when you beat the crap out of this spot, it doesn't deform the round here. Um, but I just snug that on that way it keeps this round instead of turning it to oval. So, um, and if you can slide that off and on, what the fuck? Okay. Whatever. If you can slide that off and on relatively easy, then this is close enough to round where it's not a big deal. So we'll see if that's gonna be enough. Hopefully it is. All right, so <clears throat> put this up in here. And now we have good seal around that. It's still pretty tight to the firewall. It's hard to tell, but uh, well, actually it's not terrible. There's about a half inch gap there, which I think I'm okay with. It ain't pretty, but uh, to be totally honest with you, neither is your mom. Okay, that's in place. So I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it, but I've got a solid half inch, half inch gap there between the firewall. I'm happy with that. And then uh, I got space behind this guy. I can get my hand up behind it in between the exhaust manifold. I'm good there. I'm not touching the AC line there. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Um, I'm gonna tighten all these down now. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tighten all these down. Oh, that's the other spot I need to check is up against the transmission. I'll probably see if I can look underneath there and see if I can see it. Oh yeah, we're close, but it's not terrible. Uh, actually, you can probably see, I could probably use a little more clearancing there, actually. I think I'm going to probably take that out. Clearance that just a little bit more. Uh, but then the transmission side, I'm okay on that. So then I can fit the rest of the downpipe, uh, probably weld that up, and then uh, use the flex elbow and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this is the new downpipe. This is my original downpipe. Um, stainless steel, aluminized steel. Uh, and this is a great example of a, not a professional weld. I don't claim to be a professional welder. So if you want to uh, critique my shit and tell me what I did wrong, I'm really kind of not interested. Um, all I know is that I do have the wrong gas and the right wire, or at least better wire than regular wire. Uh, this is just uh, 
75% argon, 25% CO2. I really should have trimix gas in there, which is, uh, I don't even remember what the hell that is, 90%. I think it's helium, argon, and CO2. And then this is uh, uh, ER308 wire uh, for stainless MIG welding. Um, it ain't pretty, but uh, whatever, it gets the job done, I don't care. So all I did was just make a bunch of slots uh, in the, uh, the, uh, downpipe coming off the turbo so I could close that gap up and slide this over it. And I placed that up inside the truck, figured out where this needed to go, slid it up over it and that held it enough to where I could get a couple of tacks in it, pull it out of the truck and then fully weld it up. Um, it's not, uh, it's not a freaking trailer hitch for your minivan. So I'm not super worried about like structural integrity of it. Uh, eh, it is what it is. So now this guy will go back up inside there. I'll have to figure out the uh, end of this and the flex pipe, wherever the hell that went. Uh, the flex pipe will end up going on this and then bolt the exhaust up and then we on to coolant lines. Okay, so this is cut, uh, basically lost seven inches. I had to take a seven inch chunk out in order for the flange to match up with the flange on the truck. So I took seven inches out of that and then Basically all I'm doing, I just cut a ring, uh, you know, I'll cut a ring out of the pipe uh, and I'm gonna use that just as a guide to kind of help get this thing where it needs to go. So I'll probably just throw a couple of tacks on this guy uh, and then I'll bolt it up to the truck. That guy I'll clean all the way up and then hopefully that will slide over this ring and help me kind of hold everything in place uh, while I can get a few tacks on it in the truck. Uh, and then that has to be clocked in the right spot on the truck because the exhaust pipe all the way back is welded. Um, so that flange needs to be clocked in exactly the right spot um, so the bolts line up. Otherwise, it won't fucking work. Uh, so that's kind of the purpose of the ring. That'll help me get this end into this end and then be able to turn it, throw the bolts in, get a couple of tacks on it, then I can unbolt the whole thing, take the whole downpipe out, and fully weld the whole thing. Uh, and then at that point, the exhaust side is done, and then we're on to uh, the coolant side. Okay, so the flange is lined up. This is sitting on that, so when I lift this flange up to where it's gonna end up being at, this just kind of drops into place. So I can throw a couple of tacks on that, and know that that's going to bolt up and then I can pull the whole thing out fully weld this all the way around and Bob's your uncle uh, this is a custom downpipe with a K custom custom with the K flange flex uh, terrible welds there terrible welds here clearance notch there perfection all right so now it's time for the coolant um exhaust is in locked in place done i've got good clearance up against the firewall there uh actually for some reason have like way more clearance against the frame than the old downpipe which is interesting same size and everything but whatever uh so go here um i put the two adapters in up there tighten those down those are just an adapters um and then i've attached the hose um built this hose i'm pre-building it this is the port that goes in the block the uh, uh port that it's going to go into is right there so directly below the block heater there um, i want to lose as little coolant as possible so I hooked this end up, put the hose on it, hooked it up to the exhaust brake, figured out what length the hose it needed to be, cut the hose, put this guy on. I'm probably gonna put this on and tighten it down. Um, and then uh, I'm gonna pull the plug on the block, put this in real fast, and then hook this up. I wanna lose as little coolant as possible just because, um, you know, that stuff's made of gold. So, and then I'll do the same thing now. Uh, I have the truck, the truck is completely cold. It was uh, 30, you know, it was like 20 some degrees out last night as the low. So I literally moved the truck right into the shop or right into the garage first thing this morning um, and didn't run it at all after that. So it's as cold as it can possibly be. 
um, in the hopes that I don't have a whole lot of pressure in the coolant cooling system. So we'll see how it goes. Pleasantly surprised at the lack of coolant loss. So the instructions say to the block goes in the front port. I'm guessing this is front. If I were to draw a vertical line, I'm guessing that's the front port and this is the rear port. Couldn't tell you. I don't think it really matters all that much. It's just gonna circulate through it, so whatever. And then uh, that guy's on there. Um, didn't really lose. I mean, surprisingly enough, uh, I mean, maybe a cup, uh, maybe a cup. So it's important that you get your head real tight up against inside the uh, wheel well here so that when you take when you take that that plug out it shoots straight into your face that's that's super important helps your uh helps your eyesight um when it's all lubricated so that went well uh the next one is going to be the uh i need to get to that hose right there and that's going to connect to this guy so I'm not sure where I'm gonna plug that in at. I'm not sure I really want the hose going between the elbow and the manifold, because uh, that's a lot of heat. But, uh, I don't know. I'm getting my short bear letter. Um, we'll just have to see how much hose I have. I don't really have any room though to come all the way up and over. Um, so, Maybe I could come up over that AC line in the back and come up over the top and into it there. We'll see. All right. Well, if I had to do it again, first thing I buy before tackling this is a metal tee, an aluminum milled whatever. This is a 5 8 inside diameter for the hoses inside diameter. And this is a 3 8 inside diameter. And, uh, uh, these slipped in the radiator line or the uh, coolant line super easy Probably could have been a little tighter. This one was super tight going into the uh, the hose provided with the fleece kit and I had this one attached already both sides and was pushing the hose on and snapped it off so note to self Be careful with that All right, well, I live in the sticks and I don't have uh I don't have the time, really. Everything's so far away. I don't have a T or anything close to it. Uh, so I'm just gonna build one, I guess. This is just some brake line that I had. Um, drill a hole, nice and tight. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll see. That's pretty thin stuff. It's gonna be really hard to weld on that. Especially MIG, MIG uh, in my experience to make watertight is uh, hit or miss. So we'll uh, we'll see what this does and I'll probably just order an aluminum one online and hopefully this will get me by. Okay, we've got the uh, the janky T in, janky T, as you mark it does. Um, this hose, I, this is the second hose. I didn't even bother cutting that to length. Um, I figure the higher it up it is, the better. So I left it long and it let loop up um, and then it comes down obviously to the back port right there and it comes uh i go i went on the back side of the uh, uh ac so that way it clears that and it's as far away from the exhaust as i can get so that's that this is all tightened up uh only thing left now is electrical and as far as coolant loss goes, man, I'm actually pleasantly surprised at how little coolant I actually lost. Um, you know, I just, fuck, that's it. That's it. Uh, I half expected the floor to be completely covered, and uh, it wasn't. So do it with the engine cold. Don't do it with the engine hot, because it'll be a different story if you do it with the engine hot. Um, and uh, all right. Get the electrical harness done next. And uh, then we'll fire this thing up and see what it does. Okay, so next problem. Um, this is the original VGT uh, plug for the uh, 
VGT uh, plug for the truck. And it's got to go right down there. Plug into that wire. Well, there ain't no way that's going down there. So I'm going to have to extend these wires. So from what I understand, these... Uh, these two wires are that plug into the VGT are just for power. Um, that's it. Power for the motor. And the rest of this is the can command that goes into the truck. Um, so this is just positive and negative. So um, I'm going to I'm gonna reuse this anyways. Um, I'll probably just depin this. This is just a standard nothing fancy connector. So I'll probably depin this, add length to the whole thing. And then uh, route it up across and then down just to keep it away from the heat and then plug it in down there. Okay, here's the story on the uh, on the pigtail extension. So on the truck side, this connector is super tight, like does not like to fit in the truck. Um, on the truck plug, this one up here. This is the factory factory connector right here. Um, the inside diameter of this guy is just super tight. So let's just, just be careful with that. Um, I depinned one of these guys and pulled it out and it's these, these connectors are super, super fragile. The metal is super fragile. So I opted to just cut it, uh, cut the wires and re-solder on. I used 14 gauge wire to do the connector um, and it's soldered and then heat shrink. I should have showed that before I wrapped it all up. And then I just ran the can connector inside this just to kind of keep it clean. So this is gonna drop down. Uh, that's gonna drop down back behind here. This is gonna plug in up here. This will plug in up here and then I'll wire tie all that across. And then this will go into into the cab. So uh, a couple more connectors and we'll fire this thing up. All right, here's some more funny shit. Um, this here is definitely not the stock VGT connector. Uh, I was saying earlier that this connector is really tight. That's probably because it's a different connector. This one's got five connectors. This one's got four. And I don't know, I've done so much shit to this truck, God only knows where the hell this goes. So I was chasing that around, trying to figure out where the hell it goes. Um, turns out, the stock VGT connector is way down here. Um, right there. Great connector. I uh, had it zip tied up here out of the way. So now I'm gonna plug the right one in.
So packed it up for the night, took it for a little drive, pulled really well. <coughs> had a hose come loose um, on that T that I built. Uh, I didn't have it all the way on and it leaked a bunch of coolant out, but everything up here looks good. Fittings look tight. Um, I think we're all golden there. Uh, I would say the exhaust is actually quieter in the truck and that might just be me. It might just be crazy. I don't really see any reason why it would be. It's a pa completely pass-through deal. It's not like it's got any baffle or anything in it. Um, but I feel like inside the truck, the exhaust is quiet. It sounds a lot like stock. Uh, it pulls or it breaks just like stock. Um, maybe a little less, but not... Yeah, it's been a long time since I've had a stock exhaust break, about 80,000 miles. So I honestly can't remember what stock really feels like. So... Um, it feels what I remembered it, and it sounds inside the cab just like I remembered it. So uh, I'd say it's a win. If there was anything that I would say that fleece should change, I would say um, that plastic tee uh, for two grand, you should probably probably supply like a, a nice barbed aluminum tee. That would be nice. And then their hose clamps are terrible. Um, definitely do some like regular or some nice uh, nice hose clamps something instead of like Chinese crap something like this these would be nice on that T instead of the cheap Chinese freaking they had three different clamps in there um, one was a good one like this different different style the other one was like just the piece of shit Chinese one that just the flathead wouldn't fit in it there was the, the heads were all rounded. I mean, they're just the garbage ones. And then the other one was the same Chinese garbage one, except for smaller. So a little, little different uh, clamp setup. Uh, but other than that, uh, connectors fit well once I got them in the right spots. Um, I'd say it's a win. Yeah. Fleece.